Your Grace, Bishop Nigeria and Reverend Fathers, the Premier of New South Wales, Gladys Berejiklian, and her state parliamentary colleagues, my federal parliamentary colleagues, Jason Flinsky and Senator Christina Keneally, and I have to say it's nice to introduce you as a senator rather than an MP, uh, to our local councillors who are here as well, and to our friends in the Australian Armenian community. I wanted to start tonight by congratulating the Armenian National Committee on their work since we last gathered here a year ago, and particularly for their work in the corridors of the federal parliament and in our broader community. It's been a pleasure to work with the ANC in my role as co-convener of the Australian Armenian Interparliamentary Union. I'm sure my fellow co-convener, Joel Fitzgibbon, would join me in those sentiments. We look forward to being part of a parliamentary delegation to Armenia that the ANC is coordinating, hopefully for the middle of this year. It will be the opportunity for us to affirm the bonds of friendship between our two great countries. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow Australians will pause to remember the service and sacrifice of their fellow citizens in that century-long tradition that had its foundations on the beaches, cliffs and hills of Gallipoli. We mark Anzac Day not to glorify war, but to remember that Australians were prepared to lay down their lives to defend those values that make us who we are our commitment to freedom, democracy, justice, and the inalienable rights of every individual. It is fundamentally those same values that call us here tonight as we commemorate the Armenian genocide. And it's why over a century ago, Australians came together, undeterred by our own grief and the losses of the Great War, to support the relief efforts underway for the survivors of the genocide. It was to be our new nation's first international relief operation and in our cities and towns across the country, ordinary Australians came together to form relief committees for the Armenian genocide's victims. Most Australians would have known little of the Armenian people in a far-flung part of the globe. There was only the smallest of Armenian diasporas in Australia to advance the cause. Yet Australians acted because of their sense of decency and their understanding that a crime had been committed against humanity itself. Those relief efforts were supported by their national government at the time. Back then, the Australian government recognised the scale of the genocide and responded accordingly with its support, including providing a ship to support the relief efforts. There is a lesson clearly from our forefathers, which should not go unheeded today. I hope in the next few months, the Australian parliament will have the opportunity to consider a motion acknowledging the work of our predecessors over 100 years ago to support the Armenian people in their time of need and I hope that that is just the start. Friends, tonight we solemnly remember those 1.5 million Armenians who were killed for no crime, for no sin, for no other reason than who they were as a people. They experienced brutality and deprivation that should never be ignored. In so doing, we send a message to the world that no injustice of this scale can be forgotten, because if we do, we only serve to give encouragement to those around the world who disregard the human rights of others. And we also send the appeal for reconciliation that can only occur when the government of Turkey desists in denying the facts of history. We also join together to mark the resilience of the Armenian people in the face of such adversity. Few nations and few cultures have been subject to the centuries of tyranny that culminated in the genocide. Yet in every corner of the globe, from Yerevan to Sydney, we see the incredible contribution of those with Armenian heritage. For that, we are and should be incredibly grateful. Thank you for having me here this evening. Thank you.